the background that you mentioned that the games the the movies and stuff like that do you did you feel any extra pressure to bring this iconic role to life uh thanks ricky appreciate the question um no i haven't felt any extra pressure what i've felt uh from the moment i was cast you know is uh it's been very very uh visceral to feel how how much people care about this universe and how much people care about the character, how many strong feelings there are about Master Chief. And it's totally understandable when you realize that this is a character that for the past 20 some years, we've all been playing as when we play the game. Uh, you know, there's a co-ownership we all have over the Chief because we all have our own version of the Chief. He's a symbol for all of us, right? Uh, and he's been kept very vague because it's a first-person shooter that we're invited to play as him. So we fill in the um, opaque parts of his character with our own personality. And that was the setup of the video game for the past 20 years. We're making a television show, and it's a long-form television series that we want to bring the, the audience along with us. We want the, the audience to empathize with our protagonist. We want them to, to feel for him and, and relate to him. And the only way to do that is to have access to the face so you can know what he's feeling and what he's thinking over the course of time. That's how we uh, relate to our, our television characters. And so it felt, um, it felt obvious and necessary that that was a step we were going to have to take uh, and do it early to get the audience comfortable with it. But we also realized how hard that was going to be for so many people because of the feelings of attachment they have to the character. And that's all good and that's all great. And anybody, you know, who is willing to take that journey with us and experience the character of the chief in a different way than they've experienced it before because you're no longer at being asked to be a co-owner of the story. You're now being asked to put the remote down, sit back on the couch, and learn about the chief as he learns about his own humanity over the course of the first season. If you're willing to come on that journey with us, I think it's going to be incredibly rewarding. Uh, if you're not and, and you have an opinion that differs from that, I totally respect that opinion, and you don't have to. But, um, you know, I think it's a world that's going to be very pleasing for Halo fans because it feels so familiar and it feels so uh, much like the world that we all have come to love for so long. Um, but I, I, I just as much am excited about exposing this world that I've fallen in love with over the past three years with people who have never played the game. Uh, and to show them why we love it so much, why, you know, the depth of this story and the amount of mythology and lore that has been established by some really creative and wonderful thinkers is such a wonderful place to be. Um, and so those, you know, I'm, I'm just really excited that it's coming out on March 24th. All of the questions are going to be answered. You know, all the people who thought that the helmet shouldn't come off, have a look at the show. You know, if you still feel that way, it's totally fine. You don't have to join us. But I think, I think you'll see why the choice was made. And my great hope is that you'll join us for multiple seasons to tell a really, really amazing story that uh, will only get deeper and more complex and more rich and more interesting as we go on. We've already been picked up for a second season. We have an amazing writer, David Weiner, who is attached to write the second season that, that brings um, immediately a level of depth and complexity and intelligence to the writing side that is going to be felt uh, immediately for the second season. So I'm so thrilled to get back and start working on that. And I'm so thrilled for you all to see what we did in the first season.